Welcome to Not Today Woodworking. Uh, this week we're going to make a very simple but very useful uh, shop step stool. Um, what I liked about this project the most was that it was very quick. It took me less than a few hours to mill the stock, put it together, and have it completed. Um, but also one of the things I liked the most about it was uh, it has some compound angles in here, some compound cuts on the table saw that gave me some really good practice with kind of a fundamental woodworking skill that I've not done a whole lot of. And, um, but my most favorite thing about it is that it is a multitasker. My shop is pretty small. I have a very limited amount of space. So it's very important to me that everything in the shop does more than one job. Um, this is really cool in that way because obviously it's a step stool. So it gives me a little extra height in the shop specifically to reach my high lumber rack. But also, this hole on the side is a handle so that it flips over to be a storage bin um, or a tool bin. If I was going to do a small job in the house, like hang a picture somewhere high, I load in the picture, hammer, nails, anything I need to do to hang a picture. I can carry it all with me very easily to where I'm going to go, empty it out when I get there, flip it over. I have a step stool to stand on to hang the picture. And when I'm done, I can load it all back in and take it all back to the shop. So stick around, I'm gonna show you how I did it. I knew right away that I wanted the sides of my step stool to be angled to 15 degrees. So the first step is to set the table saw blade to 75 degrees. The width of the pieces I'm ripping here will be the height of the sides of the step stool, roughly 12 inches. The reason I'm ripping these pieces with the edge at a 15 degree angle is so that when the pieces are all assembled, the top and bottom edges will be parallel with the floor. After I have the pieces ripped, I'm going to start cross cutting them. I have the miter gauge set to 75 degrees so that the sides will sit at the 15 degree angle that I want and the blade is angled to 45 degrees so that the four sides will come together and form a square. While it's totally unsafe to operate a table saw without a throat plate installed, it's also unsafe to operate the table saw with a throat plate that I had at the time, which is actually rubbing against the blade. Could have broken the blade, could have thrown teeth at me, that sort of thing. So I decided it was actually safer to be careful without a throat plate than to risk damage and injury with the one that I had. Now I'm just assembling the pieces by spreading glue along the mitered edge and I'm going to shoot some brads into it to hold it together while the glue dries. I'm going to continue around all four sides just making sure that the edges are coming together nice and neatly and put three brads in each direction just to hold it steady while I get the box assembled. Those are not invisible brads. I actually ran out. Reload the gun, shoot a few more. Now I'm just going to go around the whole box and add a few more brads on each corner in each direction to make sure that it's totally held together while the glue dries and I continue to work. I'm going to do a quick measure of the top so I know how big of the top piece to cut. I want to leave about a half an inch overhang on each side. Blade is set again back to 90 degrees for a normal straight cut. Rip the piece, cross cut it down to size, and do a test fit, nice and strong. To attach the top, I'm going to use pocket hole screws. We've got my Porter Cable Quick Jig, and I'm just going to rough a couple screws on each side. I really like the Porter Cable Quick Jig. It's the first big pocket hole jig I've ever had, but I did a lot of research before I decided on which one I was going to get, and I definitely was not disappointed. Once that's done, I'll set the top upside down, set the base on it, go ahead and add the screws. Now if you're like me, you have a shop that isn't very big, you don't like clutter, you like tools that do more than one job. I really like this tool because it does more than one job. Not only is it a step stool, but when you add the handles that I'm adding here, it becomes a storage bin or a toolbox to carry things around from one place to another. I'm going to use this 2x4, just the end of it for a rough shape of the hole. And then I'm going to cut the hole out with the jigsaw. Got a little lazy the first time around, only drilled one hole in one corner and tried to use relief cuts to get the entire hole cut out. Much easier as you'll see on the other side. Go ahead and drill a hole in each corner and just do straight cuts to connect the holes. I want to call out that this 
Oak veneered plywood is from a big box store. It's really low quality. The veneer is very, very thin. There are not a lot of layers to it. It's extremely prone to chip out um, on every cut I did, on every saw that I used. I was totally happy to use this material for a shop step stool. I wouldn't use it on a finished piece, piece of furniture, etc. Here I'm just going to drill a hole in each corner, connect the holes with straight cuts, and it goes very quickly. To make the handle a little nicer to hold on to, I'm using a chamfer bit to just chamfer the outside edge of the handle. It helps a little bit. I'm going to come in with some 60 grit sandpaper and clean up any of the splintering and chip out on the cheap plywood. And after I've done that, it's done. So here it is. Uh, it was a very quick, very simple project. It took me less than three hours total. What we finished up with is a very sturdy, very useful shop tool. It's a step stool so that I can reach my lumber rack. You flip it over and it's a bin so you can store things in it or carry tools to a job around the house. And the uh, compound angles give me good practice using the table saw in kind of a more um, advanced way or more complex way than just running straight cuts. Um, again, it's, it's very utilitarian. It's very basic looking because it's meant to be a shop uh, shop tool but if you wanted to dress it up leave it around the house you could paint it you could stain it you could do whatever you want to change the project so if you have any questions let me know in the comments below if you like the video please hit the thumbs up button and remember to subscribe thank you very much see you next time